Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the battle rating changes that had happened and how um, it would affect swing wing aircraft in the future. This is more of a general thing to look forward to because the things that Gaijin does with their battle ratings is um, a pattern. So um, it may be swing wings now, but um, if Gaijin doesn't change their ways, this will definitely affect the future. Um, so. We've all played the battle rating changes. There have been a myriad of feedback to it. There have been so many videos that have been made about it. We've experienced it all. We've seen its effects. And we're not here to talk about that. What we're here to talk about is um, what War Thunder means in the future with these kind of battle rating changes. Um, these battle rating changes show that Gaijin is unwilling to make new battle ratings unless it's already absolutely necessary. If you look at the MiG-21 MiG MF, the MiG-21 SMT, they were 10.3 on release. But to be fair, the R60s on release for the MiG-21 MF and the MiG-21 SMT were only 18 Gs. Um, that's something to think about. So, before they were 10.3, they were moved to 10.7 with the introduction of the F4 Phantom. So what? So we've all heard that um, swing wings are coming this year. The developer community showed it, and Esmin said that we are already on the process of getting a swing wing, just not the big boy. So no F-14s yet, no Navy tornadoes, or no MiG-23s. Um, this has led the community to imply that the F-111 Aardvark and the um, SU-17 were to be added. So, what would this mean if the F-111 Aardvark and the SU-17 were added? If they add the F-111 Aardvark and the SU-17, it would stay in the same battle rating as the MiG-21 Bis and the F-14 Phantoms. They would stay at 10.7. How do we know this? Because Gaijin does this all the time. They add new vehicles, then they just retroactively fix the BRs once it becomes... Uh, too unbearable or too overperforming when their algorithm trips that this certain vehicle is doing well or not or doing that bad. Um, the F111 Aardvark and the SC17, okay, I must admit they're not exactly the the leap of technology that um, uh, that would merit something an instant VR race, but. Um, this is going to be another vehicle that Gaijin has to take into account before balancing. In terms of balancing, sure, it's not uh, it's not broken now, but what if it performs badly when new vehicles arrive, like the MiG-19 PT and the MiG-21 F-13? They're not performing as good as they did when they were on launch. That's because they were superseded by better vehicles that could. Um, beat them in hands down in air to air combat. The F 4E could easily destroy MiG 19 PT with, um, with its AIM 9Js because it doesn't have flares, it doesn't have um, as good missiles as the F 4E. This planned obsolescence that Gaijin does with its um, new vehicle will certainly affect the upcoming vehicles like the F-111 Artboard and the SC-17. Looking into the future, what if the Artboard and the Fitter aren't as good as they are on release? What if they get superseded by something like the F-14? Then they'll, their battle ratings will go down. Um, if Gaijin doesn't create a new battle rating to compensate for this, you might be seeing Artboards and fitters at 10.3 or perhaps some 10.0 that means if you're flying a Shenyang F3 you're more likely to face an SE-17 with R60s. The talk of R60s also leads into my next point. Um, sometimes it doesn't even take into account how good the aircraft is in, flight, in terms of flight performance or its maneuverability or speed. Sometimes it just has to be the weapon systems it carries, let's say the A-17. The A-7D does not have the afterburners to keep up with 9.7 jets such as the uh, MiG-21 PFM or the MiG-21, but 
what it has are M9Js and gun pods, 30 mil gun pods. You don't need to chase or outmaneuver something. You just use your raw firepower to defeat them. And that's basically the reason the A7D is very dominant. People insist on heading them on, even though they have like three guns ready at you. People insist on using AIM-9Bs against them despite having players 9.7. Um, at 9.7, it gets sucked into 8.7 to 9.7 matches, which um, you get nothing but aim 9 bs There's the occasional R60s from the Yak 38M you know, and the aim 9 gs from carriers, but they can only go so far. The A7D has the aim 9 j which is a superior aim 9 It's not as good as the R60, I must admit. So this will be something that to be considered in the future. Um, swing wing aircraft will be able to move down the battle rating because it's not as good as um, it it was hoped up to be, or it was superseded by better vehicles that Gaijin refuses to move up into a new battle rating. So instead, they just lower its battle rating. Uh, it's been it's been an endless um, tirade of compression this compression that, but that's only because Gaijin refuses to address the problem. These current vehicles that we have, um, without the swing wings, without all that, they should be 11.0, at least. If I had it my way, um, which I will probably post in a new video, um, I'm creating a 15 BR system to incorporate um, future um, vehicles to be paired up with timely aircraft in their time I, I'm, I need to pair Vietnam vehicles with Vietnam aircraft and I'll try to be able to uh, make that work this is an issue that Gaijin will have to address at some point they need to understand that if they decompress the battle ratings the experience will be better and people will be more inclined to play those battle ratings because it's it's a better experience for them to play. Gaijin doesn't understand that few times people are willing to wait for a game where they have fun instead of a game where they are all compressed into this shit show, but it was fast. It took them like, what, 10 seconds to join a shit show. People are willing to wait. Um, Reddit posts have said that, uh, have made fun of the fact that some people have been queuing for 30 minutes. That's because people are patient to have a good experience and people or players want to have their experiences optimized they want to have as much fun and as much of a good time they have in playing this game that's why they play games um, for me i'd like to see my experience be enhanced for example i do want to have a good match with only F4Es in my MiG-21 BIS, that's something I would be fond of. I don't want to, I don't want to actually, I don't want to actually club 9.7s when I get into full up tiers, um, which actually happens. I just had matches where I had 5 kills against 9.7 vehicles. Um, it's not fun as it is very helpful to the grind. Um, the grind is a different thing. Um, sometimes people just play to have fun with those aircraft. Sure, there are people who grind, there are people who actually play the game too in, in order to get new vehicles, in order to get new modifications for their vehicles, but there are people who just want to play for fun. And as if you enhance the experience of people, grinding wouldn't be so bad. People wouldn't felt wouldn't feel burned out after what a grind people would actually be enthusiastic to play some more of the game if they finished the grind without that much stress because of compression or bad mechanics that were set into the game um, but let's go on to the realistic take will Gaijin do this will Gaijin actually move these vehicles to 11 or introduce new vehicles at a new battle rating? No. Um, you've seen them add vehicles from um, Raining Fire, New Power, and Hot Tracks, where they just 
chuck it at existing BRs and just fix them along the way, fix them retroactively. Um, this is going to provide a vicious cycle for Mark Hunter. There's a new vehicle, it becomes flavor of the month, it gets fixed, then it it gets superseded by a new flavor of the month vehicle, then it goes down in battle rating where it where it's not supposed to be, and it just dominates. News dominates. Everyone plays it, it saturates the battle rating, forces more up tiers, gets it gets clubbed again by the new top tiers. But the ideal take is that um, Gaijin should move these vehicles to 11.0, introduce new technologies above it, um, where the battle rating gets decompressed more, and find other ways to curtail queue times. Recently, Koala put out a video where um, he says that if you reduce the amount of players in a match, there will be more matches, less queue times, without the without the compression of uh, the crippling compression that Gaijin has set us to. Uh, this is more realistic because it's more conductive to top tier gameplay. You've only um, have to fight five aircraft, no fur balls and whatnot. It's it's an experience to be had when you both enjoy the game and enjoy the new content that comes out because it was added with prudence. So the conclusion is that um, Gaijin would be hard pressed to add vehicles with battle rating considerations before they are added. Um, you need to understand how these vehicles will perform in game. These vehicles need to be tested over and over with the communities, with the community. Um, for example, in dev servers, make the dev servers longer, play with a community that can actually um, use it. Because if it's a dev server, there's no consequences to the live server. The devs can just give everyone any vehicle, and including their own accounts, and then just play with the community and see how that thing works against the average 400. This allows people to find exploits, um, polish the content that's being added thoroughly so that when it goes to live server people have a fun experience people are more inclined to spend on the game and people are actually willing to um play a lot and gaijin could recoup these player hemorrhages that they've been experiencing over the last few months the current um the current model for war thunder is that they put out wonderful new content hype content um, which um, creates some sort of player black hole where people just where people just go and play the game, get these vehicles, um, create content around these vehicles. Then when the update gets stale, like around these times, um, in between updates, it just hemorrhages. It just hemorrhages players. becomes boring. becomes repetitive when people get um, whatever they want over it. Um, and a big example is me. I I grinded out the Leopard 2A6, but once I got the Leopard 2A6, I haven't touched it. Um, I grinded out the G35, I grinded out the 321 Biz, I grinded out the Mirage, and so far I've not touched the G35D. Only played the Mi 21 Biz, and I played the Mirage, and that's about it. Right now, I'm just uh, playing for fun. I'm not playing to grind, I'm not playing to get anything. And it gets kind of boring. So if Gaijin wants to enhance the experience, make gameplay fun and engaging so that people don't get bored in between updates and you keep your player, you enhance your player retention, people are more inclined to spend on the game, and in the end, everybody wins. People have a great experience, Gaijin has a working business model, and people are more inclined to play it. So how do we go about this? First, you have to consolidate what you want from Gaijin. Um, new graphics can wait. New vehicles can wait. People need to people need to tell Gaijin what they want. What first and foremost they want? They want battle rating decompression. They want this reversed. The 
fans need to tell Gaijin. How does one go about doing that? We have content creators with access to Gaijin. We have the forums, though uh, what a minefield that can be. Um, just consolidate the complaint into one tangible complaint that you can actually give Gaijin. Um, don't say vague um, requests like, please decompress the BRs. Um, Gaijin needs to know what to do um, in order to actually um, properly do it. We can't just give them vague requests like BR decompression or Gaijin please fix whatnot in order to be able to help them and guide them to be able to properly fix the bad readings. Um, I'm giving Gaijin of course the benefit of the doubt. Um, I'm sure they are capable, they are capable of finding ways in order to enhance a player experience but um, for one reason or another they are unable to implement it. Um, so I would propose being able to, uh, wanting to help Gaijin in such a way by creating by creating tangible proper um, uh, wish lists and whatnot we sort it out by the most urgent to the most non-urgent because um, there are a myriad of problems um, plaguing War Thunder Gaijin doesn't know where to start if we start with Air RB ground RB players get um, feel alienated if we start with ground RB Air RB players feel alienated. If we do anything, naval players feel alienated. Uh, Gaijin pretty much just chucked in dreadnoughts without any thought and just said you're on, just set you on your merry way. So we need to have a comprehensive list of problems that Gaijin needs to fix and how to fix it um, specifically. This would be accomplished by various. Um, various votes or probably discussions in, with, in, within the community before it's um, passed on to Gaijin. The, we have a bunch of content creators who play the game for a long time. Even a Gaijin hired Oxy and Mike Ghost Boom to, um, to be, their, be their official streamers. And these people have actually played the game. Gaijin should consult them and other content creators um, who've played this game in order to improve it. Um, the of course the of course the content creator shouldn't be the be all end all. They're just they're just merely a consultant guide. There should be feedback from the community, feedback from the content creators, going in unity with before going to Gaijin. So, um, if we are able to consolidate that, I think War Thunder has a chance of being future-proofed for years to come. Um, we all love this game. We all want to play this game. We all want to play this game for a long time. We all want to enjoy the new things that Gaijin will add. And um, I'm actually happy that Koala put out his um, video about three things um, Gaijin needs to do before Tier 7 jets arrive because that is an actual conducive requirement. I agree with it entirely, and I hope that Gaijin actually implements these before dropping tier seven jets. Um, swing wings are fun, more harriers are fun, but if we want to have actual fun and not just club fun or in clubbing fun, we need to enhance the player experience for anyone that isn't in top tier, you you need to have you need to have people flying the MiGs, MiG 17s, MiG 15s, the F 9Fs to have the, as much fun as someone who is flying a MiG 21 bis. Yes, we know they're grinding, but it shouldn't be like a grind. I'd like to know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll be uploading more videos.